So today we're going to take a look at something you've probably seen in the background of a couple of my other videos. This is the Quumzy K3. It's a keyboard, it's a touchscreen, it can work as a laptop dock, and it might be the perfect companion to my workstation setup. So let's take a look. Brought you guys in a bit closer so you can see my desk setup here. Now for pretty much as long as I've been working with computers, I have been a fan of using multiple monitors for productivity. I actually found a picture from the mid 2000s of one of my early setups, I got it on the screen now. And you can see I had a CRT and an LCD at the same time. And back then having two displays was probably kind of unique. At one point I had three CRTs, but um, that was just too, too much space on the shelf. So I went down to a CRT and the LCD. And pretty much ever since then I've been using multiple monitors on my workstation. But I don't just like the more is better attitude, I couldn't just have a bigger TV. I basically want to have a monitor dedicated to each task. So that's why I use an ultra wide monitor as my primary display because I can have a lot of screen real estate for the task I'm working on, whether that's editing and resolve or Visual Studio Code or something like that. Plenty of space on the big monitor. So for a large period of my life, when I was in college especially, I didn't really have a desktop. So the best I could do was a laptop and a monitor. And so my side display essentially becomes everything else. So I have to switch between email, instant messaging, research I'm doing on the side monitor. But with the Quumzy, I was able to separate those two. So on the bottom now, on the Quumzy, I keep my messaging. On the side monitor, I keep my research. On my main monitor, I keep my work. So the Quumzy has a 1920 by 720 display. I know that's an odd aspect ratio, but if you have a 1920 by 1080 monitor, it'll fit perfectly in like the Windows monitor stack. It is a touch screen, so I can use it to touch and drag chats while I'm working on other things. That does work fine. I'll show you how to set that up in Windows in a bit. And it has this beautiful RGB keyboard. It's a very satisfying click and a volume knob. So now that I've shown you my setup and how I use it, let's go into some more detail on what this is, how you can set it up in Linux, Windows, Mac OS, those kinds of things. So here's the box. They did send me this unit free of charge through review. No money changed hands and they won't see this video before you do. Let's see what's inside. This looks like we've got a retail box here. Foldable touch expanding screen keyboard. We're going to see how that works in the rest of this video. So much packaging going on here. Piece of foam to keep it safe. Oh, it feels very nice. So we got a user guide that we don't need. Product overview that we don't need. So it's a keycap puller. It's even got a peel on it. So for changing keycaps or changing, I think you can change switches, but I'm not sure. So we've got a USB-C to A cable, USB-A power brick, USB-C to C cable, and I believe this cable is supposed to be HDMI and 2A. And the reason for 2A is so you can get enough power for more than just one USB-A. So press to adjust. Okay, so it's telling me that I got to push the button on the side to adjust the angle and it'll lock. That feels pretty sturdy, so when I push the button and it falls. Okay. So unlike a laptop, it doesn't have a super stiff hinge. It has some detents at some different angles it'll stay at. And that's probably good for a desk computer. I'm going to peel the sticker off now because I know that. So we take this off and we find... So we do the peel. So we got this thing unboxed. It does look beautiful. Now I'm going to hook it up to some computers and test it. And we'll see how it works with Windows and Linux. So there's really no better way to understand a product than to use it yourself for a while. So, Clumsy K3 has sat here on my desk for the past month, hooked up to my workstation. So my workstation is pretty average. It's a Ryzen 5 7600, so mid-tier, but new generation from AMD. It's running Windows 10, which I prefer greatly over Windows 11. And all of the features of the Clumsy have worked flawlessly. Now one thing, if you want the Clumsy to perform at its best, you're going to need a computer that supports USB-C full feature. So that's USB-C with DisplayPort Alt mode and also USB 3 on the same connector. So the Type-C standard allows for up to four high-speed differential pairs. They can go in either direction. USB 3, or super speed, needs two of these for 10 gigabit or all four of them for 20 gigabit. DisplayPort can use either one, two, or four of them. So this combination uses two lanes for DisplayPort, two lanes for USB 3, 10 gigabit. That's an extremely common configuration. It's used with most USB Type-C laptop docks and other things like that. 
But if you have a desktop like me as your workstation, you're going to want to make sure that you can support that. This is not the same USB-C that NVIDIA used for their VR link. That's different. In my case, my motherboard is an MSI X670 Pro. It does have a Type-C full feature with DisplayPort Alt Mode connected to the internal GPU on my CPU. So that means I have to use the iGPU for the clumsy, which is perfectly fine anyway because I was already out of display outs on my dedicated GPU anyway. So if you're connected at high-speed USB-C with DisplayPort Alt Mode and USB 3, the Clumsy has a lot of features available for you. So in addition to the keyboard and the touchscreen display, the Clumsy also has two USB 3 Type-A ports, a high-speed SD card reader, and an internal SATA M.2 adapter. In my case, I'm using those two USB-A ports to plug in accessories on my desk. So I do a lot of testing of USB things, I've got different development boards, things like that. I can plug those into the Clumsy without having to run a cable all the way back to the main system, which is also nice for me because the main system is out of USB ports. With this setup, I didn't need to use the M.2, but everything else worked very well. So setting up the touchscreen in Windows is pretty simple. My main monitor is the altar wide, so it'll default to sending clicks to that monitor, which is wrong. So we click Setup here, and it asks us to keep clicking Enter until the right screen has words on it. So this is it, and then I just tap it, and now it knows this one's the touchscreen. So now the touchscreen's working, we can do basic stuff like draw and paint. And yeah, that's basically what you can expect from a touchscreen. So a keyboard is a mechanical keyboard. It comes with a keycap puller, so you can pull out, change the switches if you want. So included switches are these yellows. Not sure exactly what brand they are, but uh, pretty standard, so you can get your own if you'd like. Swap them out. It's an 82 key layout, so there's no numpad. There's also a volume knob, and clicking it also acts as play pause. One thing I'm not super thrilled about is the included right angle USB cord. It has a little sticker on it saying the right angle end is supposed to go into the clumsy, but if you actually do that, it's going to block either your USB power delivery port or the micro SD card reader. So not great. It is great to plug into a laptop though, but that's not how it says to use it. So since the Clumsy has all of the I.O. and the peripherals of a laptop dock, I thought I'd use it as a laptop dock. So I've got a single Type-C cable connecting the Clumsy up to my laptop. It's providing display port from the laptop down to the Clumsy, USB 3 up to the laptop, and also USB power delivery. So since the Clumsy has a USB PD input port on the back, it can use that to power itself, and it can also pass that on to the laptop. So here in power settings, you can see my laptop is charging with 55 watts. So the Clumsy took a couple watts of that and gave the rest to the laptop. The touchscreen also works too, Mac OS. Neat. Since the Clumsy has some USB 3 ports, I can also connect some high-speed peripherals like my 2.5 gigabit USB adapter. My laptop can have high-speed connectivity when it's docked at home. This is one hell of a reach around, though. Clumsy also has space for a built-in M.2 SATA SSD if you'd like to populate it with your own. So that could be handy if you're docked. You can have an extra couple terabytes to work with. So a very functional setup. So what happens if you'd like to use the Clumsy without a full-featured Type-C port? That is where the spaghetti cable comes in. So this is included with the Clumsy K3, and it basically breaks out the Type-C on the Clumsy to two USB-A and an HDMI. So if you recall from before, I said that Type-C has four high-speed differential lanes, as well as four low-speed signals. So low-speed signals are used for USB 2, and they're duplicated. So you can flip the connector upside down and it still works without having to do any fancy logic on the board. So that gets us to this wire, which is USB 2. Now, USB Type-C can support much higher power delivery than Type-A could. So that leads us to having two of these. So the red one is just for power. The black one is for power and data. You do have to plug both of them in. And they include a 5 volt, 3 amp power brick just for that purpose. But I did try plugging it into just two ports on my computer, and that worked too. Now next up is HDMI. So with the full feature Type-C, we were able to use two lanes for USB 3 and two lanes for DisplayPort. HDMI is not so flexible, so it needs all four lanes. And that means that when you're in this mode, you don't get the high-speed benefits of USB 3. 
in theory, USB 3 devices should support both USB 3 and USB 2. Um, most people don't realize this, but they're actually not compatible at all. The only reason they're compatible is because USB 3 requires devices to also support USB 2 at the same time. But they actually use completely different wiring and voltages and everything. I'm also going to be using Linux today. So I got this guy out. This is my desk mini. It's currently running Kali Linux, which is Debian based using the XFCE desktop environment. But if that doesn't work super well, I can always try GNOME or KDE or something like that. So I got the clumsy booted up, my Linux system. This may surprise some of you, but it actually works completely flawlessly under Linux. All of the USB devices do show up in the USB 2 tree in addition to USB 3, so there's no USB 3 with the breakout cable, which I expected. But uh, the SD card reader and SATA adapter both show up on USB 2 as well, so that's good. And what surprised me the most, under Linux, the touchscreen just works. Look at that. Look at that. I can highlight stuff. I can close the terminal. I can highlight stuff on the desktop. I can click on Firefox. This is great. So this is my Kali Linux system. Kali Linux is just what I had on hand already installed, but it's based on Debian testing. So as of December 2023, that's Debian Trixie, which is the more stable version of SID, which is Debian Unstable. So currently this has Linux 6.3, which is a pretty modern kernel, and it just works. I don't know what else to say. I'm in, as impressed as you are that uh, touchscreen on Linux, but now, just because the touchscreen works doesn't mean the display is going to scale correctly for a touchscreen. So, the icons are real tiny. Did I mention too, the Quumzy has sound. It comes in over HDMI or DisplayPort. So your display, the built-in display sound, there's speakers in this guy and it works. There's no other audio ins or outs, but uh, on your computer you just select the display as your audio output. Works fine. Now I can listen to my own videos on my keyboard. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tour of the Quumzy K3. I think it's really deserved its place at my desk and at my workstation. If you would like to grab one of your own, there's a link down there in the description below. That's an affiliate link which will help me out if you buy one. If you have any questions about weird Linux support, not Arch Linux, but anyone else, feel free to ask in the comments. I can test stuff out with it. It's going to be here for a while. If you like the work I do and want to support my channel, there's a link down in the description to my Kofi. Feel free to tip me however much you think it's worth. And uh, there's also a link to my Discord if you want to chat with me about anything else. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.